Are the days of the fox hunt numbered? MPs vote tomorrow on whether to ban it. Thousands of jobs may go, but does this matter if you think it's cruel and barbaric? And what about the fox? If hunting's banned, will gas, poison or the bullet be its fate? Julian Barnfield's a professional huntsman. He's in charge of the hounds at the Worcestershire Hunt Kennels. Julian's job, his home and his lifestyle are all under threat and it's an MP from down the road who's behind it. Julian Barnfield leads the hunt three days a week but today there's a special guest, the Labour MP for Worcester, Michael Foster. Tomorrow, his bill to get hunting with dogs banned is debated in the Commons. This is the uh, cub hunting season where, where uh, you know, young foxes are killed to train the dogs. And I'm obviously trying to get as close to that activity as possible, just to have a look at what goes on. Because I, I at the moment, I have this perception of it being a barbaric activity, as most people do. Oh, yeah. I can't shake your hand, it'll be right. fox with me. Oh, right, um, OK. Well, I hope you get to see what you've come to see. Yeah, well, uh, we know. Yeah. We know. If you're going to control anything, yeah. there's going to be an element of cruelty. Because if you're going to kill something, there's going to be an element of cruelty. Shooting is indiscriminate. Um, <laughs> gassing is, is absolutely horrific. Snaring is, is barbaric. Um, fox hunting is the most humane method of fox control. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for you know, inviting me along. Oh, I hope you enjoy your morning night. Well, yes, it's, it's, it's an early start, but, you know... That's, 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 Lisa supports 40 years or 50 years time, and she's 81, Dorothy Barley. Excuse me. No, go ahead, Mike. I said I didn't know he was a young man. Oh, very young man. Please to see how you are. Right? The huntsman's job is to direct the hounds, leading them from cover to spinny to flush out a fox. And because the riders haven't moved, it must be possibly still in the cover. Huh? When the fox breaks cover, the hounds follow its scent. There was the fox running <laughs> for its life. The dogs eventually sort of picked up the scent. Um, I mean, it's you know the first time that I have actually seen it happen. Uh, it doesn't exactly uh, make me feel very uh, very proud to be a human being at this moment in time. But, uh, but this is what's going on. But that's just what I'm trying to ban. And so the debate goes to the Commons, and Hunt supporters are mobilising themselves. Those involved in hunting are putting up their toughest ever fight to save their sport. Opinion polls consistently show the majority of Britain want fox hunting banned, between 60 and 70 per cent, according to surveys this year. Marches and rallies like this are being staged to demonstrate the passion of those who want hunting to continue. Hunting's been part of our heritage for two centuries or more. The people at this rally in Worcester firmly believe they're misunderstood. I'm here because I think that the proposed legislation would be bad for animals, I think it would be bad for people, I think it would be bad for the countryside, and I think it would be an affront to freedom. One of the scandalous things about it is the fact that the members of Parliament who have expressed an opinion that they're going to vote in favour of the bill very, very few, almost none of them, have taken the trouble to come and visit a hunt. And those like Mr Foster who did come and visit a hunt don't appear to be listening when they get there. Again, please welcome the Worcestershire Hunt.
the 3,500 people took a simple message to County Hall. Perhaps we could just remind the Hereford and Worcester County Council what we want them to do. We want them to listen, listen to us! Listen, listen to us! Hunting is more than chasing and killing the fox. Directly at stake are jobs and a lifestyle many of us know little about. Those of the huntsman, his whipper ins and others who work at the kennels. All my staff will lose their jobs and their homes and their way of life. Um, we don't know how to do anything else. Well, other people might say tough, but I mean, I'm 34 years old. That's all I've done since I left school. So I don't, I mean, my skills are non transferable. We are specialists in what we do. I mean, so the implications are far reaching. I've got a, a family, I've got two small girls, uh, my staff, they've got their homes at the kennels. You know, it, it, we've got everything to lose at, at Fernal Heath. A ban, it's claimed, would be a disaster for the rural economy. People like Jeff Gilby are worried. He has 50 horses at his stable yard in Loughborough. It can cost more than £100 a week to keep a horse at livery. He fears the consequences of a ban. In some parts where you get a little bit further away from the towns to what we are, the employment thing would be devastating. I mean, some villages rely entirely on supportive industries, whether it be blacksmiths, leathersmiths, people that mend the rugs, the girl grooms, the, the people who look after the trucks, the people that prepare the fences, the people who look after the woods. They would all just be out of work overnight, and they're in areas where there is no other employment. Everything in here is related to horses one way or another, and if you take out, we estimate 50% of the uh, trade would go through hunting in our local area. You've got things that people wouldn't think of, these bits are obviously made by some engineers in the town who probably don't even realise that what they're making is to do with hunting. All this stuff up here is all to do with what the horse would use every day. And it's all made by somebody whose job is at threat if they threaten hunting. In Thorpe Satchville near Melton Mowbray, David Gully's the village blacksmith. From a humble start 30 years ago, he can now give work to four apprentices. Here in Leicestershire would be uh, quite a dramatic effect especially on my business anyway, I do a lot of hunters. And also other farriers in Leicester do a lot of hunters. In some counties there is no hunting anyway, but uh, they wouldn't feel the cold, but we would here. Well, first of all, I wouldn't employ so many students to continue the, in the profession. Would, I wouldn't want them. And uh, it would be a shame because I do enjoy teaching and passing on my experiences. So there would be a loss there. Man hunted all his life. Why shouldn't he continue? I feel strongly about other things and I don't stop the people doing what they want to do. So I should think they should leave us alone. This coat is for a hunt servant, which has five buttons on the front, whereas a normal member would have a coat with three buttons. But basically, we still make clothes the same as we made them 100 years ago. They're basically made by hand and uh, from the very best material that money can buy. <laughs> we rely heavily on support from hunts. Uh, we make normal clothes, suits and all the rest of it. Uh, but a lot of this comes through originally making somebody a hunting coat. Um, you know, he'll have a hunting coat from you and then maybe follow up and have a suit and we make a lifelong customer of him. Uh, without that sort of business, uh, we would struggle to survive. Peter Ripley employs 15 staff at his tailors in Market Harbour. He makes jackets for 60 of this country's 200 fox hunts. At up to £800 a time, he's facing considerable losses. I can understand the arguments and basically we, we don't get involved with the politics of hunting here. 
it's just the effect it would have if it was banned on this particular business and I think a lot of businesses like us uh, we would uh, we would have a job to survive and a lot of them would fold. Do you go out with the hunt yourself? I don't go hunting but I do occasionally go to a meet really to see the curts that we've made. If we've made uh, three or four curts for the Fernie or the Pitesley I will endeavour to go out and make sure that they look the part. Just how many jobs fox hunting creates is debatable. The claims vary from the 910 directly employed by the hunts to 100,000. The British Field Sports Society says if you count all the stable workers for the hunt followers, the transport needed to get horses to venues and the business given to pubs and hotels, it runs into many thousands. It's commissioned a survey on the impact of a ban in Leicestershire alone and reckons 750 jobs are at stake. The hunt also provides a valuable service to farmers. The hounds are fed with animal carcasses, collected from farms, saving significant disposal fees. I get a lot of pleasure in hunting a pack of hounds, watching them work, just like a shepherd with his dog, and I'm very privileged to, to be part of the fabric of the countryside. What we do, we either catch the fox or the fox gets away completely unscathed. And it's not just about catching foxes, it's about distributing the, the litters of cubs throughout the countryside so not one sheep farmer has got a concentration of foxes on his ground. These people that say we could go drag hunting, they've never taken the time to speak to the farming community because I've spoken to the Worcestershire farmers and they have told me already if the ban was to be effective, there's no way you're coming across our land drag hunting. Drag hunting takes an awful lot of ground, it's only extremely limited, you don't need very many hounds, so sadly most of my hounds will be put down and I just cannot bear the thought of that. Drag hunting is very fast and furious sport. It wouldn't be safe for children or certainly wouldn't be safe for older people. So they don't even compare. It's like football and rugby. They're not even similar. The day's hunt over, it's back home for Julian Barnfield. Hiya. Hiya, hiya, hiya. A time to reflect with his family on a future put in jeopardy by a local MP. He's on my doorstep. He's the same age as me. He's got a young family the same as me. So everything he's worked hard for, I've worked hard for everything I've got, and he wants to take what I've worked hard for away from me, so that really bites hard for me. The hunt is a way of life a social scene in villages where other entertainment can be many miles away. We had, we had Mr Foster out with us on Monday. Yeah. To be perfectly honest, he's a quite personable guy. I met him and shook his hand and uh, got on quite well with him. He seemed to have a good day out. His only complaint was that uh, we didn't catch any foxes. He didn't ride. Seemed to thoroughly enjoy it. No, we didn't get him riding. He went round in the car. <laughs> Fundraising events are essential to help pay for the upkeep of the hounds, the kennels, and the staff. These hunt members can pay more than £1,000 a year in subscriptions. There are less glitzy events too. Pony club gymkhanas, pumpkin weigh-ins, family nights out. The hunt insists they're not an elite group, just ordinary country people. Give it a bit of schooling. Oh, 
nowadays as well. They work very, very well, don't they? Very well. Looks like about £26, that one. In the reway, actually made it two pounds heavier instead of one pound. <laughs> so, first penny grade. Oh, wow. <laughs> one of those. But with Labour now in power, animal rights groups see their best chance yet to get hunting banned. Banned hunting. Banned hunting. Sign at the table near the bus. Sign on the side of the hunted. Sign on the side of compassion. Please come to the bus. Give us your signature to put an end to blood sports. Of the 100,000 wild animals killed by dogs this year, it is estimated that just over 20,000 are killed by traditional hunts. This battle bus has been all over the country with its anti-cruelty message. It's murder of animals, innocent, what have they done? There's plenty of sports around, there's no need for it whatsoever. Uh, well, basically, I just don't agree with uh, cruelty to animals, really. I mean, what's the need? I mean, why don't you do just something that doesn't involve killing? There's plenty of other sports around, isn't there? The issue, if we take away all of the window dressing, is banning hunting and that the people that pursue it pursue it as a sport. I think that when you come to look at abuse of animals, this is really at the top of the tree and I've looked at all the arguments and I've always come back more firmly on the side that hunting should be banned. It's cruel. You said you are trying to control foxes. I didn't know. Well, what are you trying to do? Just, I'm trying to pursue we'll, we'll country sports. We'll ah, I thought a sport was a, a competition between willing people. Sport is riding horses over fences and across country with hounds Great. after Switch a quarry. To drag hunting. No, because drag hunting is like sucking your sweetie with a paper on. So in other words, it's the bloodletting that appeals to you? No, absolutely not. It is nothing to do with bloodletting. It's about the countryside, it's about riding the horses, it's about fences, it's about hounds. That's what it's well, about. Well, I repeat what I said. Switch to drag hunting, you'll have all that. You can have your... Your, your pageantry, you can have your Christmas card colours, but stop letting blood in the countryside. If there are rogue foxes, then of course they need to be dealt with. But it doesn't take, on Tuesday country in Leicestershire, uh, with a corn hunt, it certainly doesn't take 32 dogs and 50 riders to chase two or three foxes. They're the most expensive pest control officers ever, and as I say, the most abusive and cruel. Michael Clayton's chairman of the Cotsmoor Hunt in Leicestershire. It meets four times a week, runs three packs of hounds, and over a season, a thousand different horses take part. Without hunting, he believes the majority of the horses will be put down. For him, his sport has shaped much of the British countryside. The hunter actually owns six pieces of land, which is very significant, called covers, which are woodlands, which we maintain, and we have the cooperation of the vast number of farmers and landowners in this area to ride over their land. Otherwise, we could not hunt. The great glory of Leicestershire, which is an example, is due to hunting. The green lanes, which are rideable, the places you can jump, the hedgerow societies, which all the hunts run, the cover maintenance. The landscape of Leicestershire is entirely dictated by hunting. All these little covers didn't just happen. They were planted by generations of sporting people. And they don't remain as they are by accident. We still invest a lot of money and time in helping to maintain them, because without them, there wouldn't be any sport. But some wildlife groups see the hunt as a menace, rather than the force for conservation many of them claim to be. This wood was indeed planted by a hunt to encourage foxes, but the hunt's no longer wanted here. We would say that uh, in any event, uh, the nature conservation value that they provide is incidental. It doesn't, it isn't their main aim, they're there to fox hunt. That has a number of problems. First of all, uh, they manage the site for fox hunting, which may not necessarily be the right uh, 
sort of thing in ecological terms. Whereas a site like this, where there is no fox hunting, we banned fox hunting 10 years ago from our sites, uh, is managed uh, for everything that uh, is here. This is hunting country, the vast fields used by the hunts in Leicestershire. But those who don't want the horses and hounds on their land claim their wishes are ignored. The farmer who owns this field is happy with the hunt, but it's left his neighbour seething. The fox will make straight for the, the boundary where the gap is, the, and the hounds, they follow through, just go berserk everywhere because of all the fox scent. Um, they, they just have no control on them. The huntsman, when I've asked him to call them back, he won't because they don't like calling the hounds off of a fox scent. So he just goes all the way around the three sides of the field and calls them out from the other side when he feels like and it. And the hounds are, are in this field the here? The hounds are everywhere in this field, in the woodlands. Sometimes if they pick a scent up going this way, they go towards the garden, rampage through the garden. Just absolutely everywhere and I find it totally upsetting, emotionally upsetting. I just don't want foxes killed in my field and I want the hunt to stay off my property. Flora Johnson tries to encourage foxes and sees her land as a haven. The hunt's response has been to put a fence around her field. She says that'll keep all the wildlife out and isn't necessary. Whenever we put notices or signs up, they're all removed and just thrown into the hedge side, really. I mean, ideally, it should be like that, so people can see it as they're riding across or walking across. It's quite clear, it's bright red. They should be able to take note and heed what it says. Flora's planted 350 trees in her four-acre reserve and resents being told she doesn't understand the countryside. So fox is classed as vermin, but foxes do a lot of good in the countryside. They control rabbits and rats, and they, they do eat berries and things. I won't say they don't ever do any damage, because they will attack poultry sometimes, but it's usually because the farmer in charge hasn't actually shut the poultry up, and it's an open invitation for the fox. But I don't think that the hunt controls foxes, because I know jolly well that they provide the coverts to breed them in in the first place. So how can you support the breeding of the animal, call it a pest and vermin, and then go chasing it to hunt it? Many sheep and poultry farmers do see the fox as a pest, but not all. Roger Miles says he has more trouble with the hunt than foxes. Farmer's friend, basically. A fox will take a small lamb if it gets the chance, but usually live quite happily together. We, uh, when we have dead lambs while we're lambing, we throw them out the barn in the night, and the fox takes them in the morning. He never takes a live one. Not in my experience. What's your problem with hunting? Well, basically, it's killing animals for fun, and that's got to be wrong. Uh, we banned dog fighting, badger baiting's banned, cock fighting, and it's no different. Chasing an animal till it can't run any farther and pulling it to bits, it's got to be wrong. This man was once anti-hunt. He spent seven years as a director of the League Against Cruel Sports. Now he's turned. He's in favour of hunting with reforms believing the alternatives for the fox are far worse. Snaring will still be illegal. Shooting in its various forms will be still legal. Um, there'll be some people who disregard this law just like they disregard the, the Badgers Act and still go out and, uh, and kill foxes with their dogs. And also, um, there'll be people who will poison and gas, even though those two things are, are illegal. Um, there'll still be people who do that. And what our real concern is that if fox hunting goes, then the fox's status in the countryside changes. It changes fundamentally, and people view it in a different way. Back at the Worcestershire hunt, the MP Michael Foster sees nothing to impress him. My bill is written in such a way that if a fox is a pest, it can be dealt with lawfully, dealt with quickly, humanely, and the best way, as far as we're concerned, is to shoot it. I mean, I mean, obviously, my bill is designed to end cruelty to, to wild mammals, and that's, I mean, that's its title. Well, what that's about expected. shooting, then? That is going to be crueler than hunting. 
I, I, you can say what you no. like. I've shot all my life. Mm. But with shooting, you shoot at him, you hit him, and doesn't kill him, and that fox has got to go away. Well, sir, I mean, and he's got to lie there perhaps for a day, a week, or a fortnight dying. Certainly two of the three foxes that we've seen today could, could easily have been killed with, with just an adequate marksman. But are you going to get him out of the um, cover, then? Michael Foster's bill is likely to meet fierce opposition. The debate may be prolonged to make sure there's not enough time for it to become law. The government says there's more urgent business which must come first, so it probably won't be able to help. It won't give extra time. What we do have is a bill that will outlaw the cruelty involved with hunting with dogs. And we have parliamentary time set aside to bring that bill onto the statute book. My job is to use that time as effectively as possible. If the House of Lords try and talk the bill out, then they will be shown up to be a minority uh, group. They'll be unelected, they'll be unrepresentative of British public opinion. And that's where the focus of anger will be. But I'm convinced with a good showing of, of MPs tomorrow, uh, and we know that we have British public opinion on our side on this issue, that this bill will become law. As the vote gets closer, the bill's been gathering support. In Birmingham, a rally attracted some interesting participants. I think she's frightened. <laughs> there were 45,000 signatures on the petitions, and other Labour MPs promised their allegiance. If this bill fails because of lack of time, it will be because of filibustering by the Tories in the Commons and it will be because of filibustering by the Tories in the Lords. I think it really is uncharitable to say it's not the government. Given within the whole concept of our election victory and what we've promised to do, if this fails, it's because of the Tories. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's Christmas gift back as well. Thank you very much. Well. Thank you very much. We'll do our best. I do wonder if, if members of the public, and indeed members of Parliament, were shown the full range of alternatives that, that could come about if a ban went through. The problems there would be for a number of hounds being put down, taking out a tier of, of horse use, a good many jobs, I mean, not, not a massive number, but you know, a good few thousand going, and the problems that the fox would still have to face, that if all of that was laid out, whether the public and MPs would come to the conclusion that we have, which is that there's got to be some sort of sensible middle road here, that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. The practicalities of drawing up legislation which is workable will be very difficult for Parliament. I think it's incredible when you think of the enormous amount of problems in this country, unemployment and drugs and all sorts of social problems. Here we are gazing at our navel and worrying about fox hunting. I think it's appalling. Each farmer and landowner would take it in his own hands um, with the gun in his cupboard, which is probably a shotgun, there wouldn't be that many with a rifle, and take pot shots at what foxes they saw. There would be wounded and maimed foxes all over, um, and the poor fox would be persecuted to death. My argument is that people can still go hunting, and, and we would encourage them to go hunting, but not hunting a wild mammal. They can follow an artificial scent or follow the trail of a human across country, so that people are still going to be employed to look after the dogs, still going to be employed uh, in the kennels, uh, and still employed actually controlling the hunt and, and marshalling the hunt. But what you don't have is, is the killing of a wild mammal. If they get pleasure from seeing the fox torn apart, disemboweled, having pregnant vixen, uh, having their unborn cubs scattered over people's back gardens. If that's what they enjoy, then quite frankly, I don't think they should be in the countryside getting pleasure from those type of activities. <laughs>